most of us, it's become a depressing fact of life. Capitol Hill gridlock, an unavoidable truth we simply accept because there really isn't anything we can do about it. But this past weekend, a group of more than 100 political scientists, lawyers, and thinkers gathered at Harvard to come up with some creative solutions with a bit of high-tech help. Joining me now is Maggie McKinley, who organized the event along with two members of the winning team, Jesse Landerman and Kat Kane, who are both Harvard Kennedy School students. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. So Maggie, could you tell me a little more about this event and what the premise behind it is? So this event was born out of a concern that our Congress, which is the heart of our democracy, is just completely dysfunctional. We have single digit approval ratings. We have a lawmaking process that is completely gridlocked. And so we lament often that this institution is broken, but there just aren't a lot of solutions on the table. And so this event was there to supply solutions. It was there to open a conversation in a space where a multidisciplinary audience could come together and start to put those solutions together. So Kat and Jesse, tell me about the solution that you guys came up with, which was deemed the best solution, right, of, of 13 different solutions proposed. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Sure. So we were really focused on civic engagement and um, specifically how technology can sort of um, foster more dialogue between constituents and their representatives. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew we wanted to do a project around that, and this was a really excellent forum for that because we had so many politicians, technolog technologists, and um, sort of people from all sorts of disciplines um, coming together to kind of bounce around ideas and really brainstorm. So what did you come up with, ultimately? So the problem we wanted to tackle was the fact that citizens don't feel like their voices are being heard in Congress right now. A lot of citizens don't even know if they can get a meeting with their representative. They wouldn't know how to do it. And they wouldn't know what to do when they come in the door. So then from the congressional side, uh, congressional staffers start to feel like it's kind of like pulling teeth, like an obligation to meet with constituents. It's not really productive. So we created a tool to do three things. One is allow constituents to directly request an in-person meeting with the representative, either at their home Home office or at their DC location. The second thing is to educate them and prepare them for the meeting, which is a major part to kind of let them understand what is the congressional lawmaking process, what can they ask of the representative, how should they conduct themselves in the meeting, mm -hmm. what should they ask for, what should they bring, and then also create a forum for them to connect with other people while they're going through this process and afterwards to keep advocating on their own issue. You call this a tool, would it be an app or a website you could use or both? How would it work technically? So this is going to be an online platform um, where people can and use the tool on the website to um, write an email to their congressman or um, send a, a, a letter, um, and it'll be formulated on, mm -hmm. on the website. And then from there, once they're getting their meeting, they can go back and use um, tutorial videos and you know, other, other resources that are out there. To Got prepare. it. So they're going to go, these guys will go perhaps with you to uh, a presentation in Washington, right, in a few months? Yeah, we have two other events that follow this one, both organized by the Ash Center and the Open Gov Foundation. One will be held in San Francisco in March and the other in D.C. in April. And finalists will be selected by a panel of judges at all of those events. And they will all get together and present their projects to members of Congress and staff, I think sometime later in the spring, potentially May. Uh, I would think that some of our viewers right now are, are watching this and thinking, well, the reason that Congress is horribly gridlocked is because there's an incredible ideological divide that has right. grown sharper and nastier, more crippling in recent years. How can new technology help surmount something that is ideologically based? What would your answer be? I think there's a pervasive theme that constituents feel like they're not necessarily being heard um, by their representatives, um, especially amid growing presence of lobbyists um, in Washington. And so that's exactly what we wanted to tackle with this project, is fostering more engagement, more dialogue, um, and hopefully breaking apart some of that good luck. Meg, I see you nodding your head. Yeah. So all of the studies actually show that the ideological divide is mostly in Congress itself, whereas there is a silent middle uh, moderate group that is just disengaged. And You're talking about nationally speaking. Nationally speaking. There is, without, uh, uh, outside of Congress, um, in the general population, they're actually pretty moderate. But that moderate group is completely disengaged from the political process. So what this platform would do is give them an avenue to get in and actually have their voices heard and potentially bring in a moderate perspective. What do you guys think of, uh, again, another more traditional diagnosis, which is made sometimes, or I should say a couple, there's campaign finance. Right. Obviously, you mm -hmm. hear that, that as soon as you're elected to Congress, you need to spend you know, 80 or 90% of your time seeking money to get reelected. Sure. 
and um, the whole question of districts and how they're drawn, and you know, they're drawn in a way that they're safe for incumbents, but that makes them, that pulls them to the ideological extremes. Do you see those as problematic think, things? I think that you're identifying a really important problem, and also the fact that not every problem can be solved with a hack, right? Like a lot of things are going to take policy change, they're going to take legislative change. That's not what the hackathon was necessarily for. But I think you highlight a really important problem, which is that you know only certain some problems are are harder in a different way. And they're not going to be necessarily solved in 24 hours by bringing a fresh set of eyes, which is really one of the things that a hackathon offers. Um, those are absolutely important problems. By the way, in asking those questions, I don't mean to suggest that the, the problem that you guys are seeking to tackle isn't real, because it might sense anecdotally is that most people wouldn't have the faintest clue what to do if they wanted to go to their right. congressman or woman and get, get results. So if you, when you go down to D.C., tell me again the date. In May. May. In May. Okay, so let's say you, you win this thing and your project is deemed to be the best of all of them. What would happen then? Do you get seed money to make it happen or? Oh, well, they have one. These are, these are this, the winners. This exists. This is so available. They, okay. And so they get to present. The prize was that they get to go down and actually present their project before members of Congress and hopefully get adoption um, by those members that they might start using it. But the tool itself is yeah. out there. Like if someone's watching and they want to the, use it? The not tool yet. Needs not yet. Yeah. Okay. We need to, I guess I mean, it just happened, right? Sort of yeah. Thing. We'd like to. We're looking forward to the meeting with Congress to sort of get more input before we invest more time and energy in actually developing the technological capacities of the tool. Right. But yes, we do want to do that. Kat, Jesse, Maggie, thank you all and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. That's our show for tonight.